the name of Allah, the merciful, the beneficent. Now with the main headlines. The office of Grand Ayatollah Shirazi announces the first day of Jumad al-Awwal. India. Shia ulama to devise strategy to combat evil acts that harm Shia and Muslims' religious sensibilities. The International Committee of the Red Cross. Malnutrition cases for Afghan children rise by 90%. World Halal Summit. OIC Halal Expo begins in Istanbul. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, dear viewers. This is Ayyub, and you are watching Shia Waves live from Imam Hussein TV Free. The Office of the Supreme Religious Authority, His Eminence Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al Hussaini al Shirazi, announced that today, Friday, is the 30th of the month of Rabi' al Thani. Therefore, the first day of the month of Jumad al Awwal, 1444 AH, is tomorrow, Saturday, November the 26th, 2022. Shia ulama across India will gather on Saturday for the 4th Ahl al-Bayt conference to pay tribute to the victims of the 26th of November Mumbai tragedy and to devise a strategy to combat evil acts that harm Shia and Muslims' religious sensibilities. Further details in the following report. Prominent Shia cleric from Lucknow, Maulana Saif Abbas, was reported saying, the objective of this conference is to promote communal harmony and oppose terrorism. Lahore is sending anti-social elements in Lucknow to hurt the sentiments of Shia. Pakistan has become a breeding ground for terrorist organizations such as Sipah al Sahaba and Al-Qaeda, which continue to target the Shia people, he added. There is a population of 16 to 24 million Shia in the country of which the majority lives in Uttar Pradesh. Maulana Jafar Abbas expressed concern about the spread of terrorism around the world, saying Saudi Arabia is a big supporter of terrorism. Pakistani terrorist organizations receive money from Saudi Arabia to harm innocent people, he said. The Shia population in India is dispersed unevenly. Shia neighborhoods can be found in major cities such as Lucknow, Hyderabad, Murshidabad, Mumbai, Kolkata, Mysore, Bhopal, Chennai, and Bangalore. India is the only non-Muslim country in the world with a Shia population that accounts for 1-2% to of the total population. The conference is being held in Shia College in Nakhas by the All India Shia Husseini Fund. The International Committee of the Red Cross said it has recorded a sharp rise in malnutrition cases among children in Afghanistan with the onset of winter and the worsening economic crisis. The committee stated in a report published on Wednesday evening that cases of child malnutrition which were received by 33 hospitals across the country rose from 33,000 cases last year to more than 63,000 cases as of November. The report indicated that the number of injuries recorded an increase of 90% in the current year compared to last year. Poverty rates in Afghanistan have increased compared to previous years, said Dr. Abdul Qayyum Azimi, coordinator of the committee at the Indira Gandhi Hospital in the capital Kabul. He added, most people cannot afford the heating supplies necessary for their homes and children, nor can they provide adequate nutrition for their children. Therefore, the incidence of pneumonia is increasing and the number of malnutrition cases associated with pneumonia is also increasing. The report indicated that despite the significant decrease in the intensity of fighting, the humanitarian situation in Afghanistan still raises concerns. More than half of the population, that being 24 million people, needs humanitarian assistance, while 20 million people suffer from severe food insecurity.
Let us remind our viewers of today's headlines. The office of Grand Ayatollah Shirazi announces the first day of Jumad al Awwal. India Shia ulama to devise strategy to combat evil acts that harm Shia and Muslims' religious sensibilities. The International Committee of the Red Cross Malnutrition cases for Afghan children rise by 90%. Also tonight, China, UN Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination calls for probe into Xinjiang rights violations. The Eighth World Halal Expo commenced in Istanbul on Thursday with officials delving into measures to further expand the flourishing global market for halal products. Nearly 500 exhibitors from 40 countries are taking part in the four-day events, showcasing a variety of products and services conforming to Islamic guidelines known as halal. The events are expected to draw some 40,000 visitors, including around 9,000 people from across the world. The two major gatherings, considered the most important cooperation platforms for the halal market, aim to make Turkey the hub of a flourishing sector already worth more than $7 trillion. And now we continue some short news. Saad Hamid, the General Training and Placement Officer of Ali Ghar Muslim University, discussed a range of careers building on Quranic and Islamic studies. He was delivering a job and placement lecture on job opportunities for students of BA and MA in Quranic studies at the KA Nizami Center for Quranic Studies. Saad talked about jobs in the private sector, government sector, think tanks, policy institutes, NGOs, special interest organizations, research institutes, specific departments and agencies, and universities. He also answered queries of students in a special interactive session. Professors attended the event and extended gratitude to the training and placement officer for providing the students with career guidance. The director of the office of Imam Hussein's satellite TV channels in Lebanon, Hussein Jawad Sadiq, discussed with the dean of the College of Education at Al Mustansiriya University in the Iraqi capital Baghdad, the prospects for joint cooperation in the production of cultural and educational media programs. Sadiq said in an interview with Shia Waves news agency that he discussed with the dean of the College of Education, Professor Dr. Isam Asal Hassan, and in the presence of the journalist, Dr. Ahmed Al Zahir, the production of realistic media works of a theoretic nature for many educational, psychological and social problems. He added that he presented his vision during his visit to the university in this regard for joint cooperation with the College of Education to produce an intellectual, dialogue, educational and social programme package with professors and students of the college, stressing the importance of such cooperation because the College of Education occupies a prestigious position on the scientific and educational level. For his part, the Dean of the College of Education welcomed this cooperation while expressing his full readiness to provide all possible facilities to make this cooperation work a success. Today, on the blessed day of Friday, otherwise known in the Islamic calendar as Jumu'ah, the holy city of Karbala witnessed rainfall as pilgrims are flocking to the holy shrines of Imam al-Hussein and his brother Abu al-Fadl Abbas, peace be upon them. The rainfall began in the early morning of Friday and continued for hours. The National Centre of Meteorology expected that the weather today, Friday, will be partly cloudy in general with the possibility of more rainfall to come. Hundreds of Indonesians prayed out in the open next to rice paddies and in the streets on Friday as the death toll from an earthquake that flattened their town in western Java 
rose to 310, Reuters reported. Sianjur, where the quake struck, is a town with roughly 175,000 people and is located in a mountainous district of the same name with over 2.5 million inhabitants. The town is known for having a large number of mosques and Islamic boarding schools. On Thursday, the UN Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination called on Chinese authorities to investigate human rights violations in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. More details in the following report. The UN Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination called on Thursday on the People's Republic of China to immediately investigate all allegations of human rights violations in the Xinjiang Uyghur region including those of torture, ill-treatment, sexual violence, forced labor, enforced disappearances, and death in custody. Acting under its early warning and urgent action procedure, the committee also called on China to immediately release all individuals, particularly those in detention facilities, and to provide relatives of those detained or disappeared with detailed information about their status and well-being. In 2018, the committee reviewed the periodic reports submitted by China and issued concluding observations in which it expressed concerns about human rights violations of Uyghur and other Muslim minorities. As requested by the committee, China submitted its follow-up reports to those concluding observations in October 2019. In 2022, Due to the lack of improvements in the human rights situation in Xinjiang, the committee decided to prepare and to adopt a decision under its early warning and urgent action procedure. Reporting, Ahmed Husseini, Shia Waves. The United Nations has condemned the executions carried out by the Saudi Arabian authorities continuously, calling for an immediate suspension. A spokeswoman for the UN Human Rights Office said 17 men had been executed in Saudi Arabia since November the 10th on drug and smuggling charges, calling the executions extremely deplorable. Speaking at a press briefing in Geneva, Switzerland, spokeswoman Elizabeth Frossel continued saying that those executed were from Syria, Pakistan, Jordan and Saudi Arabia, bringing the total number of executions this year to 144. Saudi Arabia executed in 2022 twice the number of those carried out these sentences last year, according to a statistic revealed by Agence France Presse, indicating a sharp increase in this procedure that international human rights organizations strongly condemn. 27 executions were carried out in 2020 during the height of the coronavirus outbreak and, eight, and 187 in 2019. The activities of the Omana al-Rasul Scientific Conference on highlighting the legacy of Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Mahdi al-Khurasan were launched in the holy city of Qom with the participation of a large number of researchers and professors of the Islamic Seminary and Holy Shrines in Iraq. Mushtaq Saleh al mudaffar director of the scientific complex of Imam al-Hussein, peace be upon him, said, This conference was held to honor scholars from the Holy Najaf Seminary his eminence Sayyid Muhammad Mahdi al Khurasan, who spent more than seven decades studying, investigating, and authoring books on the heritage of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. He added that the Holy Qom Seminary decided to hold a conference for Sayyid al Khurasan, and it was with the participation of the Imam Ali and Imam Hussein, peace be upon them, holy shrines. The first edition of the conference was launched in the holy city of Najaf three weeks ago. And yesterday, the conference was held in its second edition in the holy city of Qom. al mudaffar referred to the great role of the Imam Hussein Holy Shrine in highlighting the four of scientific figures, including his eminence Sayyid Muhammad Mahdi al khurasan As the Imam al Hussein complex initiated the printing of al khurasans encyclopedia, which consists of 46 parts on various topics. We have reached the end of today's Shia Wave Show. Let's remind our viewers of today's headlines. The 
office of Grand Ayatollah Shirazi announces the first day of Jamad al Awwal. India. Shia ulama to devise strategy to combat evil acts that harm Shia Muslims' religious sensibilities. The International Committee of the Red Cross. Malnutrition cases for Afghan children rise by 90%. World Halal Summit, OIC Halal Expo begins in Istanbul, Turkey. China, UN Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination calls for probe into Xinjiang rights violations. United Nations condemns executions in Saudi Arabia. Umana al Rasul Conference kicks off in the holy city of Qom in cooperation with the holy shrines in Iraq. You can view the latest news on Shia Wave's website and you can send news of your city or country to be published on our news agency. Please contact us on the numbers at the bottom of the screen. This is the end of today's news and thank you all for watching. We pray to Allah Almighty to hasten the reappearance of the master of our time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.